Hello everyone. We're getting ready to look up today with a brand new Uplook video, tackling one of our top 10 lists. You can like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Today's topic is 10 ways to start sharing the good news. In Acts 1.8, the Lord Jesus made this plain statement, You shall be witnesses to me to the end of the earth. What an honor! First, our life should be a witness, but we should also speak to others about the Lord and the way of salvation. Wouldn't it be thrilling to see someone come to life through the gospel? Here are some practical helps to make real progress in our Christian lives. Let's get started. Our first on the list of top tens is make a list of people you know that you want to see saved. You know, Dave, in my early Christian life, I prayed kind of generally about the lost, but it wasn't until I actually made a list, sort of a top ten list of people I really wanted to see saved, that it became real and it, it increased my zeal for the lost when I saw it in black and white. That leads uh, perfectly into our number two, which is to pray practically for them. Yeah, you know, sometimes you'll hear people say, Lord, save so-and-so. And I wonder sometimes what he thinks. Well, what exactly do you want me to do here? Because he's already provided salvation, if only they'll believe. But there are specific things in the Word that tell us that we can do. For example, we can ask that the Spirit convict them of sin. We can ask that the truth that's already been sown in their hearts might be uh, stimulated and revived in their thinking. And also that the Lord will, in a kind of conspiracy of love, will bring godly Christians around them that they'll admire, who will have an influence for good and have courage to speak to them. So these are all things that are helpful in praying for the lost. Good. Our next one is... Number three, get a handy sized but legible Bible to carry with you. We don't want to be walking around with a big bazooka. It makes people a little uncomfortable, but to get a good handy Bible that we can carry with us, and you might want to think about a, a more simple English, a modern translation, or at least be sure and explain every word in the verse because we can't assume that people understand Bible words. Good, and following that is number four, memorize some good Bible verses. I think we're familiar with the Romans Road, maybe uh, some verses in John. There's no definite way that the Spirit might lead, but it's good to have a bit of an idea. Uh, we want to cover the basics, uh, man's ruin, man's need. God's provision in Christ, the resurrection, so that now it's a living Savior that we're offering people, and the assurance we can have of sins forgiven. So these are important verses, and it's good for us to have a handful of these verses. And along with that, you have a resource available. Right, right. We uh, put together this book, Seed Thoughts for Soul Winners. There's a whole series of 365 passages that are good for a gospel evangelist to have in hand. There's a daily devotional, and it includes um, real testimonies, opportunities to witness, answers to often ask questions, explanations of gospel terms, and so on. So you might be interested, that's available from Uplook Sea Thoughts for Soul Winners. Uh, number five is to prepare your testimony on a three by five card and practice sharing it in two minutes. Okay. I think the idea here is that a good testimony is something that makes not so much of an emphasis of the before. We want to tell that we were sinners and sort of identify with them so that they don't feel like we're charging them with something that we're not guilty of ourselves. Then we want to have a clear story of the conversion itself, and then we want to talk about some of the benefits of being a Christian, the joy and peace we have in believing. And why do you think two minutes is a good goal to have? 
Well, it's good for us to tell our story, but that's not really the gospel yet. We want to transition from that into Christ's story, into the story of salvation. So it's good to keep it short. We don't want to spend all our time talking about ourselves. Good. Uh, next is number six. Each morning, ask the Lord to give you opportunities that day. I think the Bible is full of what we might call divine appointments. I think of the story of Naaman, where this little girl, unnamed girl, who had been kidnapped from her own country, she could have had every reason to be upset, to be angry and bitter, but instead she was ready to sow a seed of truth in the heart of Naaman about the God of Israel, and we know the end of the story. It's exciting. And God wants to do that with all of us. He wants to give us opportunities. He knows everybody in our community. He knows the people that wept themselves to sleep last night. And he knows the best person to interface with them. And he knows the message to give us to share with them. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get up in the morning and realize today could be the day that I have the opportunity of sharing the gospel with someone. Our next one is also a morning request, number seven. In your morning reading, ask the Lord to give you a short message to share. I think it's a very powerful thing if when I engage with someone, I'm able to say to them, this morning I was having a time of prayer and God brought you to my mind and I prayed for you and as I was reading the scripture, God gave me a message to share with you. Would you be interested in hearing what it is? You're asking for their permission, but you're also stirring up their curiosity. And once they give that permission, then you're free to explain the gospel from that verse. Uh, number eight. This is one that's been very helpful to me. Talk authentically to everyone, be respectful, and show concern. Right. As the world gets darker, the Christian should shine brighter. And what used to be common courtesy is pretty uncommon anymore. And so if I can um, hold the door for someone, help someone with their, their cart, with their groceries, whatever it might be, they respond generally in a positive way. And it gives me an opportunity to share a little of the gospel with them, maybe even just a Bible verse to remind them that God loves them. And how do I know that? Well, because Christ died for us. So uh, it's good to recall people's names, and that's why I keep this little notebook in my pocket. That's my memory assist so that I can keep bringing them before myself and be able to call them by their name the next time I see them. Very important to people if we remember their names. Yes, yeah, that's very good. And when, I, when I'm at work, I found that if I don't talk to people normally, it's harder for me to see opportunities. But if I'm constantly talking to my different co-workers, then more and more I see opportunities to bring up the Lord. Now for number nine, we've moved kind of from prep to this idea of explain the gospel simply, caringly, and prayerfully. Right. Sometimes we're concerned about uh, the fear of not having answers or not being able to do this well, not having the good approach. That's where we should be helping one another. Gardeners love to talk to other gardeners about gardening, and fishermen love to talk to other fishermen about fishing. And, and we ought to be eager to talk to one another and say, what do you do in this situation? How do you help? The cults do this all the time. When they get back from uh, door to door, they want to know what were the questions that you couldn't answer, and then they try to find something. So we who have the truth should be eager to help one another so that we're not doing this alone. We're part of a team. All right, and finally, number 10, depend on the Lord for results, for guidance, for boldness, and for ideas. I can't really add anything to that. I think that's exactly what we need to do. Every step of the way, we should be in prayer, asking the Lord for help and looking for his guidance. And he always has the best ideas, so be open to what the Lord might suggest. And you've had a little tool that has been helpful for you recently. Right, right. I had a, a promotional from the National Pen Company. They offered these pens. They probably would cost $5 or more if you bought them at a local store. But I can get these for less than 50 cents a piece. And they're nice gel pens with a stylus on the end. They come in a little velvet pouch. And they're ideal for giving away. People love to get them. 
and I have on them the key to life. Nahum 1 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. And so it's a nice comfort word for believers, encouraging them to go on trusting in the dark times. It's also a great gospel verse to remind people not everybody trusts the Lord, and that's what we need to do. So I'd encourage you to think about something like this. It's an excellent little tool, a bridge again, a channel of communication, an opportunity to communicate the gospel to someone. So may the Lord encourage you. Don't give up on this. We need to be involved. We need to encourage one another in this because the world is dying around us and they need the Savior. And what a joy it is to be involved in this work and sharing the gospel with others.